Hi there and welcome to this day in history for January 28th. January 28th is the 28th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 337 days remaining until the end of the year. Except for leap years when there are 338 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is brevity. Brevity is a noun that means shortness or conciseness. The attribute of being short or fleeting, for example, if you Give a report on agriculture in the Northern Hemisphere in three minutes. <laughs> you have done it with incredible brevity. <laughs> brevity comes to us from the late 15th century from Old French brevet, from Latin brevitas, from brevis, brief. You can use brevity for things that are literally short, like the brevity of an elevator meeting or the quality of fleetingness, like the brevity of youth. Mm -hmm. which doesn't seem that brief when you're in the midst of it, but there you go. Brevity is also a style of speaking or writing with economy. Brevity is the soul of wit, said Polonius in Shakespeare's Hamlet, suggesting that witty people know how to make a point without unnecessary words. Alrighty then, now we're going to go back to the year 1777 when British General John Burgoyne submitted a plan on January 28th to the British government to isolate New England from the rest of the colonies. At first this plan seemed to work, but then it went south on him and he ended up retreating and surrendering 6,000 men. <laughs> This was actually a pivotal point for the success of the Patriots because when the French heard about it, they said, oh yeah, we can get behind that, and agreed to recognize the independence of the United States. France's eventual support had a lot to do with the ultimate victory of the Patriots in forming the United States. Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice was first published in the United Kingdom on January 28, 1813. This is the birthday of William Seward Burroughs I, born January 28, 1857. His dad was a mechanic, so he had the opportunity to work with machines growing up. He started working in a bank in 1882 when he was about 25, and a lot of what he did there was reviewing ledgers for errors. These ledgers may have looked something like this. Of course, nowadays we have calculators, most of us at our fingertips on our smartphones. But this was a good century plus before such as this would be available. There were some prototypical adding machines at the time, but those were apparently complex and difficult to use. And in the hands of the inexperienced, one could get insanely wrong answers with those devices. Clerical work was not favorable for Burroughs, and he left banking and moved from upstate New York to St. Louis, where the weather was warmer. He got a job in a machine shop, but his time in the bank had him thinking about an adding machine, or as he called it, a calculating machine. He worked one up and filed for his first patent in 1885, formed a company in 1886, Mr. Burroughs died in 1898 at the age of 41, and after his death, his business partner renamed the company the Burroughs Adding Machine Company. In 1953, Burroughs became the Burroughs Corporation and expanded to other types of business equipment, such as typewriters, printers, and computers. Mr. Burroughs had formed his original adding machine company in 1886, and 100 years later, in 1986, Burroughs merged with Sperry Univac to form Unisys. On January 28, 1902, the Carnegie Institution of Washington was founded in Washington, D.C. with a $10 million gift from Andrew Carnegie. On January 28, 1915, during World War I, Germans sunk an American merchant ship. They acknowledged this and apologized, but the damage was done. On January 28, 1917, American forces were recalled from Mexico after over 10 months of fruitless searching for the Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa, who was accused of leading a bloody raid against Columbus, New Mexico. Elvis Presley made his first national television appearance on CBS's stage show on January 28, 1956. 
On January 28, 1958, 19-year-old Charlie Starkweather and 14-year-old Carol Ann Fugate, couple of teenagers turned serial killers on a crime spree, killed another family. Altogether, their murderous spree left 10 people dead in the span of about a week's time. Fortunately, they were captured the following day. Books, movies, and music have been written about them. Starkweather faced the death penalty and was executed in 1959. Fugate, who turned out to be a model prisoner was released in 1976 at the age of 33. And now for some happier news. On January 28, 1958, the Lego company patented the design of its Lego bricks, still compatible with bricks produced today. Whoops! On January 28, 1964, Soviets shot down a U.S. jet that had strayed into East German airspace. This is the birthday of actor Elijah Wood, best known for his portrayal of Frodo Baggins in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Following the American Music Awards ceremony on January 28, 1985, 45 music stars met up for a marathon recording session to sing a song called We Are the World. It's a phenomenal work, still gives me goosebumps, amazing rich voices. They raised more than $60 million for African famine relief. On January 28, 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger took off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, carrying five NASA astronauts, one payload specialist, and one civilian school teacher. It was to be a historic flight, and in fact it was, but not in the way anyone had planned. A little over a minute, about 73 seconds after the liftoff, the spacecraft essentially disintegrated in an explosion in the first major shuttle accident in which there were no survivors. And I think that's enough. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include the link to my blog page that is called, no really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, BitChute, and Gitter. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. January 2nd, the 16th. It's all written in Roman numerals, so I had to translate it. <laughs> Hopefully I got that pronunciation close. Yeah, Annie's ready to go. <laughs> Flinging happiness all over the place. All right, back to work.